Happy New Year. So we're gonna talk about the three most common mistakes that artists make that we want to leave behind in 2024. So let's go. So the first common mistake that artists need to leave behind in 2024 is the mindset of quantity over quality. So as artists, we have a ton of different projects that we're working on and you only have a certain amount of time, money, and resources to spend on each of those projects. So the more projects you take on, which a lot of artists do, the less and less time, money, and resources you're able to dedicate to each of those different projects. I find myself in those situations a lot when I take on a little bit too much and the quality of the work suffers. The quality of the end result result of whatever I'm creating, whatever I'm working on, takes a big hit. So in 2024, it's okay to say no to yourself and say no to clients. No. And really just focus on taking on the projects that you love the most so that you can spend that quality time, that's quality resources, the quality energy on those projects so that you can have the best outcome with the best quality because that's what it's all about. So the more no's you say to yourself and to clients, the better quality your yeses become. So remember that mindset. So this not only has to do with the projects that you take on, this can also be applied to the materials that you're using as well. Using quality materials is super important. So for myself, when I go to an art store and I look at oil paints, because I'm doing an oil painting right now, and I had to go to the uh, art store last week and I was looking at all these different types of oil paints and they were super, super expensive. Like some of them were 50 bucks and then you can go as high as 200 bucks for some of the oil paints. I mean. I'm literally thinking that it spits out gold. And then when I turn around, I see the paint in those value pack. You know, you get 20 different colors for, you know, 10 bucks. And you're thinking to yourself, why don't I just get those? So when you're getting cheap paints, you're getting paints that have been made with cheap material, cheap formula, cheap chemicals. Bonding agent isn't as well. There's not as much pigment in each of the tubes. So when you're doing your paintings, you're not getting the results that you want because it's not as opaque as you want. It doesn't cover as well as you want so you really want to make sure that you're investing in quality materials quality supplies so that you're thinking about the artwork and the concept in creating it versus fighting with the actual materials you're working with and the number two common mistake that a lot of artists need to leave behind in 2024 is using common references this is something that I used to do when I first started out doing a ton of art and that is because I did a lot of pop art so I would go online and Google musicians and athletes and you know major figures and models and basically use those references as the foundation for whatever I was creating. After a while I started finding that this was very limiting to my growth as an artist especially in this digital age. I would go online and see that other artists were using some of those same references and it didn't help that I was also very helpful in sort of sharing the knowledge of how I do my work and how I you know choose my colors. So now anyone that goes online and sees all of our works basically now I'm just another artist in that same pool of the same artists that do the same stuff. So it's kind of like that Spider-Man meme where all the Spider-Mans are pointing to each other like who's who, you're me, I'm you. And that's something that artists do not want. We want to be different, we want to be unique. So that's why I found why it is important to create from my own references through my own photography. And that is why I picked up a camera and started creating my own references for whatever painting or creation I wanted to do. A great example is a mural I did in West Allis, Wisconsin near Milwaukee. I painted my friend and his son on his shoulder on this assisted living facility. The image that I took basically was in his uh, store that he owns and basically I did the reference and I was able to control everything and that is why this image is so powerful because I have a connection with those individuals and there's no one that can kind of really just duplicate it because the reference is basically from me. It's not online, it's not on Google, you can't find it anywhere other than looking at my computer. And it also helps because there was thoughtfulness in the decision making of what I'm using, what I'm inspired by, the references from the start of the actual creation of the piece 
to the ending of the creation of the piece. And this can not only be used for the references in terms of like the imagery that you're using, but also the materials and the processes that you're using as well. When you're going to the same art shop and using the same tools and using the same process because you're learning from the same pool of resources, the teachers and mentors, basically you have the same potential as every other artist that you see, but you also have the same limitations as every other artist that you see. So it's great to sort of go outside the box when it comes to the tools that you're using, the process that you're using in your practice to to create the work that you do, mainly because using different processes and materials that aren't normal, that aren't sort of common in the arts community will give you just something different. So for example, the artist Hawks out of Miami will use a sprinkler that you would use in any uh, garden or any lawn care sort of maintenance. Basically, he will use that to sort of apply paint to the wall for his murals, his canvases. And when you see his work, it's very distinctive. You can't duplicate that with a normal brush you can get at Dick Blix or you know Hobby Lobby. It's something that is very unique. So whenever I see a piece like that, I think of Hawks, the artist, and that is what makes him super unique. So remember, if you want to be different and stand out, make sure you're not using the same references and sometimes the same tools and processes as other artists out there. The number three mistake that artists do that they want to leave behind in 2024 is not enough network. No, no Let's call it something different. Let's just say it's relationship building. No, no. No, no, no. And relationship building is something that you need to do to get opportunities in this art world because that is what it runs off of. There wasn't an opportunity that I received that wasn't through, let's say a friend of a friend or someone that knew me or someone that knows me or knows my work. There's always some sort of connection with the opportunities that I get. So I know it may be tempting to stay inside and watch Bob's Burger while you're painting. But it's super important to get out there and interact with people and build those relationships. Right now I'm working on a piece for the ABB Gallery in Atlanta, Georgia, and that is through Greg Mike. And he is someone that I met years ago. And basically because I met Greg Mike years ago and I do great work, he is someone that has reached out to me multiple times to do group shows in his gallery. So if I was the same artist and Greg Mike and his team didn't know me, it would be a little bit harder for me to get into that gallery group show. As an artist, sometimes that's very difficult to hear that the art world is run off of relationships and networking, but think about how you navigate your own life in terms of making decisions. A lot of times you will use your friend's recommendation or you will go online and look up reviews. And it's the same thing when it comes to artists and curators and gallery owners and museums and different opportunities with residencies and grants. A lot of that is just getting out there and just connecting with people and letting people know that you exist and you're sort of great at what you do and what you do and why you do it. So the lack of networking we need to leave behind and in 2024 you need to go out there and actually go and meet people. And that's why in my last video I did of four things that artists need to do in 2024 that I added LinkedIn as one of those social media platforms that artists need to sign up for. So hopefully this helped out. You can easily address all of those different points and really turn your career around or just accelerate your career going forward in 2024 by avoiding these mistakes and actually just making sure that you get out there and use unique materials and you're thinking about quality and you're networking with people. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you next time. Peace.